Hello and welcome to Web Developers Working Week episode 5, the fifth episode in this series where I talk about what I've been getting up to on a weekly basis as a freelance web and mobile applications developer. Now this week has been slightly different because I've actually taken some time off. Believe it or not, I actually took uh, Monday off and really wasn't a relaxing day because I went to see the doctors, everything's perfectly fine. And I did do some work on the way to the doctors as I was getting the train. Uh, I did some work in the waiting room. I did some work on the way back. I also did some work when I got into this office after I got back from the doctors. So technically, technically it wasn't a day off but um, it was a sort of a non-Cody day. I also did some work actually on the Python course that I'm doing for Pact Publishing um, and uh, lots of other paperworky type stuff that you just have to do when you are a freelancer, which is a bit, bit of a drag. But anyway, we don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about some of the Cody stuff that I've been getting up to. Um, so recently, it's been a bit stressful recently because I've been working on some third party applications or third party libraries and lots of the things that I've been doing, I've witnessed um, various third parties doing things wrong, right? So for example, using third party APIs where there is a get request where there really should be a, a post request. Um, so deciphering where things should be and trying to code around those sort of crazy inconsistencies. And it is a bit of a struggle because one would expect things to be done in a certain way. Uh, but when you discover that they aren't, it is just it's a it's infuriating because you've wasted your time trying to discover how they use these things uh, and B you start to think, well, I'm going to end up supporting this. So, and they might, because I'm not in control with how they do their uh, their API endpoints, it might be that they decide that they want to do it properly and using the post request instead of a get request um, later down the line. So you have to kind of code with that kind of in, in mind um, and also writing your own documentation to let other developers know that in fact, it is done like this because that is how they request or retrieve data. Um, it's not the ideal solution and it's not my fault and I do apologize, but this is how it's done at that time. Unfortunately, this is how legacy code gets out of hand when you have to do things wrong because other people are doing things wrong and it just, it is, it's just, it does get you down. Part of me is wanting to reach out to this various third party library and just say, look, this is how it should be done. Um, but I don't have any capacity or time to help them out, which is annoying. It's annoying because you, you feel like you are now part of the problem, uh, which sucks. It's, it sucks, but, uh, you know, such as, such as life, really, you're not paid to support someone else's application. You're only paid to support the application that you're, you're currently working on. And if that application is dealing with other applications that aren't written very well, then you have to just sort of, you know, chin up and get on with it really. But anyway, that's a bit negative. Let's, uh, let's move on to something else. Um, so there's been a lot of JavaScript. There's been a lot of, uh, ES, uh, six kind of stuff. There's been a lot of CSS as well, where I've been uh, going through, I think I mentioned before, I did some bits and pieces with some graphics designers. Uh, well, I've been actually working on, uh, on that, those kind of things as well, which has been quite interesting and challenging as well. Um, and refreshing after all of the issues with the third party libraries that I'm, I'm having to deal with when you can actually do something that is actually creative, which is nice, uh, rather than having to put in what I would class as as little plasters over large cracks of inconsistencies. Anyway, let's not let's not dwell anymore on on that kind of thing. The move of the new premises, the new office, is uh, going on quite well. Although there really isn't much to report with that because it's kind of we're kind of waiting upon various third parties again um, to cross the 
cross the I's and dot the T's. I've done lots of episodes on IGTV. I've done one quite recently on Ajax. Uh, it's kind of like a follow on from the from the video I did the other week on Ajax. Uh, but this one was talking about how you can use Ajax in an SEO friendly kind of way. Uh, I also have done one on QR codes and talking about how QR codes can be uh, useful for various types of applications. These are all coming off of the back of some questions that I've been been receiving or I've, I've checked and looked at on Twitter. Uh, and on Instagram and on YouTube and so forth. So if you've got any quick questions that you want to throw my way, then let me know and I'll see if I can do uh, some sort of Instagram TV episode type coder question thing. Uh, with the QR codes, that was very interesting because I actually did a lot of development um, uh, a good few years ago. I worked for a company that did a lot of things on QR codes and on barcodes where we were able to uh, track and monitor uh, various objects that were serialized or had information serialized in QR codes or barcodes. And of course you can use uh, post requests as well, not just getting information, but you can post information to those QR codes if you're using um, like a mobile application. If you develop a mobile application, then you can attach uh, like a web form, if you will, or a form on, in your mobile application, and you can send that to the destination stored in the QR code. I've done that various times, uh, which has worked out pretty well. And as I mentioned in the IGT episode, which I'll link in the doobly do below, you are limited by your imagination as to what you can actually use QR codes for. Lots of times people just use it to display information from a web page, but you can do so, so much more with QR codes and barcodes. Anyway, something that I'm really, really chuffed about is an application that I've just found, or I found quite recently. It's called Duet Display. Uh, I'm certainly not sponsored by these guys. I just wanted to mention it because this is something that is one of those things that you kind of discover and you're thinking, why didn't I discover this before? Duet Display allows you to um, have a use, use your other Apple products as another secondary screen. So you see, you see my iPad here. Um, I can use that as a second screen to my MacBook Pro, which has been fantastic and it has totally changed how I develop applications because I can use that as a secondary screen. I use that usually as another terminal window. So if I'm trying to, to, to tail some logs as I do various things, then that is the secondary screen that I use there. Or I use it to um, have Postman on, which is, which is another great application uh, for doing API uh, requests and so forth. I'm not sponsored at all by uh, Duet Display. It's a bit uh, awful that I have to mention that, that I'm not uh, sponsored. I just don't want anyone to say, oh, you're sponsored, you're talking about an application. It's just, I think it's fantastic. And if there's anybody watching this that uses Apple products and they want to use a secondary screen and they have an iPad, then Duet Display is fantastic. I think there's another one. I think there's, is it AirPlay or Air? something or other is there's there's various other ones i think duet display is is good because it uses the lightning cable which means that there is zero lag between the two displays which is fantastic and that kind of brought me to the the idea of what other displays can i use with my uh, apple uh, pro, macbook pro and my imac here and when i bought this macbook pro when i bought this thing um, if I can show you behind. When I bought this thing, um, I went, I bought it and I thought to myself, look, I'm not going to be one of those people who carry around loads and loads of dongles because it's USB type C. Well, you see that vertical screen there that I've had for yonks and yonks and yonks, which usually goes sort of here on this side of the desk. Well, it's actually connected to the MacBook Pro via a dongle. So unfortunately I am carrying around with me lots of dongles. <laughs> I've got three so far, uh, which I know doesn't sound a lot, but it's just a bit of a pain when you have to carry around various cables. And I must say it's only because that screen though, that screen is old uh, and it uses VGA back in the day, VGA. I think I've been spoilt with these retina displays that I've got here um, because uh, it is a bit sort of difficult on the old eyes. So hopefully when I move into the new office, maybe 
in the future I might be able to get myself a better screen uh, with uh, certainly some better resolution that would be nice but again this is really extending my productivity because that is fantastic and I've never used vertical screens for coding before it's something that I've always thought that's a very good idea but I wasn't too sure whether it was just a trendy idea but actually it's extremely useful so right now I'm, I use iTerm and you can see that I've cut the, these two up so that it's, it's two it's basically two terminal windows or one terminal window just spliced or split the session into two which is fantastic um, so I do I do recommend if you've got an old screen and you don't mind using or an old iPad uh, then you can use you can use uh, duet display or get some dongles and attach and create yourself a little command center like I've done which is um, pretty pretty awesome Woo, it's gone blue. We are coming to the end of the Python for Beginners course, or at least this section of it uh, here on YouTube. So what I've done is I've created a Twitter poll where you can cast your vote as to what I will be teaching in the next course. So the options are Python, their PHP and their JavaScript. And there is an option for other as well. So if you want to cast your input and cast your vote, then do click on the link. I'll put it in the doobly doo below um, where you can cast your vote and, and suggest ideas as to what I should be teaching later on. I think right now uh, Python is the thing that is in front. So I might be doing some other bits and pieces to Python depending on the outcome. There is, I think, five days left to cast your vote so if you haven't done so already do vote if you haven't done so already do follow me on both twitter and instagram and subscribe here obviously to pick pick those courses up but thanks ever so much for watching happy coding everyone i'll see you again soon cheers bye